गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू वेलकम बैक टू द क्लासेस ऑफ क्लास टेंथ आई एम हियर टू स्टार्ट अ न्यू टॉपिक चैप्टर टू पॉलिनोमियल्स बिफोर डेट आई वॉन्ट नो फ्रॉम ऑल ऑफ यू डेट आई वेदर यू हैव कंप्लीटेड चैप्टर वन एंड चैप्टर फिफ्टीन इन योर नोट बुक्स एंड इफ यू हैव नॉट डन येट काइंडली कंप्लीटेड बाय वेडनेस डे and if you have any doubts in any of the topics any of the questions you please message me or send me the question or you can call me also now i am going to start the topic chapter 2 of your note of your ncert book the topic name is polynomials this topic you have already studied in class 9th and the base of the topic is already started in class 7th and 6th we can say the polynomial starts with the topic algebraic expression when we talk about algebraic expression we talk about variables and constants the thing which keep changing is called variables and the thing which does not change is called constants so algebraic expression is a expression that contains variables and constants now when we talk about algebraic expression the power the exponent of that algebraic expression the variable that having the algebraic expression can be we can say rational but when we talk about polynomials it is a algebraic expression in which the exponent of the variable should be a whole number i am repeating again an expression an algebraic expression in which the variable exponent should be a whole number is called polynomials so polynomial is an algebraic expression in which the variable exponent the power of the variable should be a whole number so i'm writing a definition and algebraic expression in which the power of variable should be whole numbers it should be whole number it can neither be negative it can not be rational also it is just the whole numbers example i am writing here x cube 3x4 7x square plus 2x plus 3x to the power 0 this is an algebraic expression in which the variable x has the power whole numbers now in class 9th we dealt with the cubic polynomial the factorization of quadratic polynomial and algebraic identities in this context in this class 10th we are going to decide the solution of the polynomial using graph then using the relation between the roots and the solution of the bi quadratic polynomials so the topic that we need to discuss is graph of polynomial for solution only then factorization of quadratic polynomial then division algorithm these three topics we need to discuss in this chapter so in the next part of the video i am going to tell all of you how we can calculate the solution of a polynomial using the graph and how we can calculate the roots of a quadratic polynomial 
and express a relationship between the roots and the coefficients of the polynomial. Thank you. The next topic that I am going to start is quadratic polynomials. As we know that polynomial is an algebraic expression in which the exponent of the variable is a whole number. It cannot be in the fraction form, it cannot be in the rational form, it can neither be negative also. It should be whole numbers only. Now, in this context, we have to deal with quadratic polynomials. So, what is a quadratic polynomial? First of all, we are going to understand that a polynomial which has general form ax square plus bx plus c a polynomial which can be written in the form of ax square plus bx plus c in which the coefficient of x square is a, the coefficient of x is b and c is the constant value is called quadratic polynomials. The most important thing in this polynomial is that the degree of the polynomial should be equal to 2. Now we all know about degree we have already studied in class 9 the highest power of a polynomial is called the degree now on the basis of the degree we can classify the polynomials like if degree equal to 1 it is called linear polynomial Now if degree equal to 2, it is called quadratic. If degree equal to 3, it is called cubic. If degree equal to 4, it is called biquadratic. And so on. So the most important thing about the polynomial is that using the degree, we can classify it linear, quadratic, cubic and biquadratic. Now in this context, in this chapter, we have to deal with the roots of the quadratic polynomial and we have to establish a relation between them. See, we have an equation ax square plus bx plus c. If we put this equal to 0, it will become quadratic equation. Now see the most important difference between both. This is a quadratic polynomial. When we equate this equal to 0, we have a RHS here. Then it will become quadratic equation. Now when we solve this quadratic equation, we get two roots. Two solutions are there. Alpha and beta. Why we have two solutions? Because the degree is 2. So, if we talk about biquadratic polynomial, number of solution is 4. If we talk about cubic, number of solution is 3. The degree tells us about the nature of the solution. Degree tells us about number of solutions. Now, this alpha and beta are the roots, are the solution, are the zeros of quadratic polynomials. We have a relationship between them, alpha plus beta, this is called sum of roots. It should be equal to minus b by a, alpha beta, this is called product of roots. It should be equal to c by a. These are the relationship between the roots of the quadratic polynomial and the coefficients a, b and c. In the next part, I will show you this with an example. Now I am going to tell you one question which will help you to understand the roots of the quadratic polynomial and the coefficient relationship. 
Now the question is find the roots of the polynomial and express the relationship between roots and coefficients. 3x square minus 7x minus 6. This is a quadratic polynomial because the degree of this polynomial is 2, the highest power. Now equating it to 0 to calculate the roots. We all know this is quadratic polynomial so we can do the factorization by splitting the middle term. Now 6 and 3 is multiplied we get 18. So we need to find two numbers having the product 18 and the difference because the sign here is negative is 7. So we take the number 9 and 2. 9 minus 2 gives us 7 and 9 into 2 gives us 18. Now equating this and simplifying we, get, we can get x equal to 3 and x equal to minus 2 by 3. Since it is a quadratic polynomial, so we have two zeros. We have chosen one as alpha and other is beta. You can take whatever you want, this alpha or this alpha. No, no issue with it. Now, the polynomial have the coefficients a, b and c. The value of a is 3, the value of b is minus 7, the value of c is minus 6. Now we know the relation that alpha plus beta equal to minus b by a. So we have calculated alpha plus beta, we have just taken the values of alpha and beta, put it here and simplify it. Minus b by a, the value we have taken from this and simplify. After putting the value and simplifying, what I am going to see here, that alpha plus beta gives us minus b by a. So the relation between some of the roots and the coefficients of x and x square is verified here. Similarly, Alpha and beta means multiplication. So 3 into minus 2 by 3, 3 and 3 cancel out. We get minus 2. C by A. C and A is divided. We get minus 2. So again the relationship, product of the root is verified by the ratio of C and A. So by this we can verify the relation for different quadratic polynomials. I will show you one more question which will help you to understand this concept more clearly. Now I am going to tell you how to find a quadratic polynomial in which the sum of the roots and the product of roots is given. In the previous part I have calculated the roots and verified the relationship for the sum and the product. See carefully. Find a quadratic polynomial if sum of the roots means alpha plus beta is 4 and product of the root alpha beta is minus 12. Alpha and beta are the roots of the quadratic polynomial. Now general formula for quadratic polynomial is k which is a constant here x square minus alpha plus beta into x plus alpha beta. This k remains as it is, x square is as it is putting the value of alpha plus beta which is 4 and alpha beta which is minus 12. So the value we get the inside is one of the quadratic polynomials. We can make as many quadratic polynomials from this by putting the value of k as 1, 2, 3 and so on. Similarly, again we have alpha plus beta as 0, alpha beta as minus 2, this is sum and this is product. Putting the same formula again, just substituting the value we get a quadratic polynomials and we can make infinite number of quadratic polynomials using this relation. So, in case of quadratic polynomial, what you all need to understand? You have to understand the method to calculate the roots and to verify the relationships. Then you have to understand how to calculate a quadratic polynomials using the given conditions. Now the last part of the video is I am going to tell you about the graph of the polynomials and calculating the solution using the graphs. Now I am going to tell you how to calculate number of solutions by seeing the graph. This graph we have for the polynomial p of x. As the polynomial is in terms of x. So for number of solutions we are going to see the x axis only. If it is written p of y well then we have to see the y axis only. The polynomial in terms of x the number of solution we get from the x-axis. Now by seeing this graph 
number of points on the x axis is 1 2 and 3 so the number of solutions is 3 as it does not cutting x axis at any point so number of solution is 0 now in this two points are there so two solutions so the graph will tell us at how many points the curve is cutting the axis by which we can calculate the number of solutions now when we talk about quadratic polynomial the curve that we make for this is a u-shaped curve which is called parabola first curve towards the x-axis positive x-axis this is for towards the negative this is towards the positive y and this is towards the negative so we get the u-shaped curve you can also draw this curve using some points which is given in the NCRT book also you can go through it and this type of question will come for one marks in board exam any graph will be given and you have to be asked number of solutions so you have to first go through it that the polynomial is in terms of x or y if it is in terms of x go through the x-axis if it is in terms of y go through the y-axis so up to now you have to do exercise 2.1 and 2.2 which you will all be able to do using these concepts that I told you now Thank you very much.